Hey everybody, this is Michael J. Flores and you're watching the Extended SWOT Analysis for the Lightning Bolt deck. Put briefly, SWOT stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. Compared to the other top decks in the metagame, the Lightning Bolt deck simply isn't strong in the same way. This isn't to say that there aren't some very good reasons to play the Lightning Bolt deck. I found it to be one of the most common opponents on Magic Online recently. Just at the incentive figure in my mind more as opportunities, being the result of fortunate external factors, rather than internal synergy or the raw power of dealing three points of damage, one time. While the Lightning Bolt deck has more resilience than you might guess due to Flames of the Blood Hand and Sulfuric Vortex, it is still an extremely narrow, single-colored strategy that plans to win up top of its deck with virtually no card advantage. This deck is so single-minded that it can be completely overwhelmed by specifically targeted, although admittedly seldom seen strategies such as Story Circle, Circle Protection Red, or Concerted Life Gain in the form of Pulse of the Fields, Martyr of Sands, or Kitchen Finks. Perhaps more than any other deck in the metagame, the Lightning Bolt deck is a deck of opportunity. The first thing I want you to consider is the often mentioned flexible mana bases in Extended. For a deck that counts the opponent's life total towards a kind of card advantage, or at least a measure of card economy. Actions like the opponent voluntarily playing a flooded strand and breaking that land for an untapped steam vents with a total negative delta of three is like drawing one to one and a half extra cards. We joke that Zoo starts at 14. The Lightning Bolt deck will often have enough cards to win the game with just its opening hand. For such a simple 75, the Lightning Bolt deck is rife with surprises, misdirection, and added value. Umazawa's Jitte is less effective against the Lightning Bolt deck than it is against All in Red for two reasons. Number one, the Lightning Bolt deck can typically cook most creatures planning to wear a Jitte during combat, before damage goes on the stack, and obviously after the opponent can move the Jitte onto another available attacker. And two, it is pretty good at chump blocking with Mog Fanatic or Blink Moth Nexus plus Shrapnel Blast to keep the counters off the Jitte. That said, an active Jitte is still a nightmare even if the deck is able to stick Sulfuric Vortex, as an uncontested Jitte makes for a decidedly one-sided race. There are many things that the Lightning Bolt deck doesn't want to see, but none are as common and few are as devastating as the world's most popular piece of equipment. So this is actually game two of the Zoo match you probably just watched. We've never analyzed from the opposite perspective before, but I felt like this was a perfect opportunity because this time we're not the hunter, we're the prey. So again, we're starting on 14. That's so scary in this matchup. Our mulligan hand is actually really good. Uh, it's just a matter of whether or not we can race the red deck. And on his second turn, he's going to brain us for six, and it's going to put us in single digits already. So now we have a pair of three threes. One of the things I was thinking about was to get a green-white land on turn one and follow it up with a red-black duel so I could play both my Fnatic and Wild Nakatl the same turn. But I decided I didn't want to play my land untapped anyway, so I don't think it matters very much. So relatively unexciting turn, uh, seeing that we're at four and he has two cards in hand, the game is actually almost hopeless. Yeah, this end of turn Magma Jet is just going to ensure that he has the burn card for us. And that's how it works. Flames of the Blood Hand and we're out. With a game this fast, I almost want to rethink the strength section. So in game three, he got a quick lead thanks to a fast lava spike, and by doing a little damage to myself. Then he played Pyrostatic Pillar when I only had a couple of points of power in play. I couldn't do anything without taking two, and I didn't have a very fast clock on board. It was very easy for him to ride the lead and kill me in response to a Lightning Helix and Tribal Flames I had set up because the pillar's ability resolved before my burn spells or life gain. For our earlier discussion on opportunity, Zoo has quite a rough time of it with the Lightning Bolt deck. In my opinion, if you are the Zoo deck, this is not the matchup you want to see first round. This has been Michael J. Flores. I hope you like this SWAT at the Lightning Bolt deck.